And those textbooks uh, will come up for adoption in 2011? Assuming the schedule is followed, but you know, all states, including Texas, have been getting beaten up by the economy and, and budgets right. are slashed. Uh, I would not be surprised if textbook adoption was put off for a, a series of months or years or something. Which may be good, because that's what I wanted to touch mm -hmm. on. The, the textbook publication is actually uh, the manner in which this issue goes beyond Texas, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. so explain that a little bit. Well, there, it's an interesting phenomenon. Back in 03 and 04, when, when we were fighting the textbook wars in, in Texas, um, one of the points that, that we made was, uh, yes, this is serious, the rest of the country should pay attention to it because the books that Texas uh, requires to be written are the books you get in Nebraska, you know, basically, uh, because Texas is such a huge purchaser of textbooks that they really disproportionately slant the content of textbooks. However, you know, in the intervening years, um, there's been more and more, you know, this digital uh, publication, there's more and more modular publication. It's easier for textbook publishers these days to produce the Texas edition that could be full of junk, you know, and produce straight science for the rest of the country, which is good for the rest of the country, but not so good for Texas, yeah. right? I mean, your students could end up getting seriously miseducated. I mean, the textbook publishers don't want to do this. You know, they. I've never met an editor. Um, the salesman, I you know, there are other people. Yeah. I, I've never met an editor in a textbook pub, uh, publishing company that wants to produce bad science. Yeah, because I mean, they tend to be educators or yeah, former educators. Exactly. Or they're scientists, or they're people yeah. who have you know who who have an emotional stake in, right. in 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 the discipline, and they they don't want to produce crappy science. They really don't. Um, but the publishers will publish the books that people buy, and. State of Texas has a lot of influence there. Now, um, the textbook publishers could produce crummy books for Texas. They don't want to because it's an extra expense, and they'd rather just produce one issue, one edition right. that goes out to everybody. Um, one of the uh, arguments that we are making to the publishers is that if you compromise the books in order to make Texas happy, you will not make the rest of the country happy. And, you know, certainly NCSE and our allies among the science organizations, the education organizations, will certainly do what we can do to spread the word that publisher X has this kind of material in his books. Do you really want to buy that? You know, we're not going to do a boycott kind of thing. Sure. But we certainly will do what we can to inform the, the decision makers in the states that, hey, this is not a good book. No. Yeah, and that's part of the, the NCSE's role. But going back to the hearings, what mm -hmm. exactly did you guys do? Because I, I was on uh, the mailing list for, mm -hmm. for a lot of the, the, mm -hmm. the announcements coming from the NCSC, and uh, it, it gave a lot of information about going down to the to the Capitol or the uh, the state Capitol in Austin right. and testifying right. in front of the board and everything. And I know a lot of people did. What what did you see going on there? Well, remember, NCSC is. A remarkably small organization. I mean, we, we I'm, I'm pleased to say my staff is very effective. Uh, we do good work, but we're really tiny. And we can't be in 50 states, much less in 15,000 independent school districts. Okay. So we work by, by partnering with people on the ground. Um, we, pr we have a lot of experience in this controversy. We have a lot of information. You know, what are the various forms of creationism? What are the responses to their arguments? How do you mobilize the science community, the education community, the religious community to help support this uh, good science and so forth? So we always partner with the local people. We worked here with Texas Freedom Network yep. and the Texas Citizens for Science with whom we've worked in the past. We worked in 05. Uh, I mean, basically, they consult with us. Um, we, we defer to them in terms of the local decisions. But it, it, it really was a true partnership. I mean, these are, these are wonderful organizations to work with. And you know, as painful as it is to keep coming back from, to Texas every few years, uh, here well, we are again. We're At least we work with great people. Yeah, really and we're certainly do. glad that you, you do take the time to yeah, come well, back and no, fight this these is, fights. This is important. Texas is a big state. There are a lot of people who live here. And because of the, uh, the influence that Texas has outside, as you pointed out, with textbooks, no, I mean, we're going to keep coming back to Texas until you all get it right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. What is your impression of uh, 
of uh, Don McLeroy and, and, and Terry Leo and this, I, I keep referring to them as the creationist cabal because it's a that, group that, of... That's a nice alliteration. Yeah, it's a, it's a group of what, <laughs> six or seven of the Texas State Board members who yeah. are, uh, many of them are openly creationists. They yeah. have their own websites uh, touting that fact. Mm -hmm. Strengthsandweaknesses.org. What, yeah. is, what is your impression of these adults? Did I say adults? I know no, board you members. Yeah. Adults, what? you said adults. Ad adults. <laughs> <laughs> what is, I mean, because I, every time I think of them, I get this weird version of yeah. Little Shop of Horrors running through <laughs> my head where Don McLory is the sadistic dentist, but instead of inflicting pain on people, he just ruins children's futures, you know? So, what, I mean, what is your impression of these people? Are they, um, can they learn? Well, can they, can we show them the error of their ways? Are they, or are they hopeless ideologues that can only be removed through the election process? You know, um, I think a lot about ideology. I really do. Religion is an ideology. There are a lot of different religious ideologies. There are many secular ideologies. Atheism is an ism. It's an ideology. There are a lot of different ideologies. And ideology is not bad. You know, as, as social primates, if you will, as, as human beings, ideologies help shape our lives and shape our outcomes uh, for good or ill. And you know, ideology in itself is not bad. Where you have to be really careful, whether yours is a, whatever your ideology is, secular or, or religious, you have to be careful that your strongly felt ideological views, the things that are in your heart, don't affect your ability to take in empirical information and judge it rationally and logically and make some conclusion. I've seen this happen not just with, with religious ideologies but with secular ideologies as well. It's yeah. a problem that, that human beings have because the heart and the brain are two separate organs and we don't always get them to work together very well. Sure. In the specific case of the uh, Texas board members, Don McLeroy is an example, I think we have an example of somebody who has let ideological concerns uh, uh, override the empirical evidence. Um, when he is a young earth creationist. I mean, he seriously believes and sincerely believes, I have no reason to doubt it from what he writes and what he says and his passion when he talks about these things. He sincerely believes that the Bible should be taken literally and that means the earth is young and that means that all creatures were created in their s present form as separately created kinds and there's no possibility of evolution. Now, I think his religious ideology of biblical literalism clearly is, is overriding his uh, intake of, of what we would consider standard scientific information. Mm -hmm. He is listening to those who claim their scientific information um, uh, showing the earth is young and showing special creation and so forth. And of course, you know, now obviously I'm, uh, I accept modern day science, but to me, it's not an ideological thing, all right? Um, I would say that the evidence for a young Earth versus the evidence for an ancient Earth is lopsidedly on the side yeah. of an ancient Earth, and that is an unbiased statement. <laughs> well, this, this seems to be a hard concept for a lot yeah. of people to understand, that, that uh, especially religious folks, they want to, to claim that there's a dogma associated with science or that yeah. there's an ide yeah. ideology associated yeah. with it, and, and that's just not the case. Yeah, the, the claim is that because science explains things through natural causes, therefore the ideology of naturalism, uh, the isms are ideology, therefore naturalism or scientism uh, is, is uh, an ideology that undergirds science. And that is just empirically wrong. Uh, and frankly, the, the atheists who make that claim are empirically wrong, just as are the creationists making that claim. It's empirically wrong because you have scientists who practice science in this methodologically naturalistic uh, fashion. We, we do restrict ourselves to explaining through natural cause. That's methodological naturalism. But they are theists, or they are not theists, or they belong to any number of, of uh, other religious uh, traditions or ideological traditions. Mm -hmm.